Welcome. My name is Isabel Guyen. I'm president of Chalearn, a U.S. nonprofit organization dedicated to bringing to you interesting machine learning challenges. This presentation will introduce you to the Cause Effect Pairs Challenge. Let us first motivate the challenge. What affects your health, the economy, climate changes, and which actions will have beneficial effects? Such are some of the challenges that Causal Discovery wants to address. To answer such important questions, we have a lot of publicly available data. But those data are for the most part so-called observational data. that are data that were recorded without planned randomized experiments in which to test the causal effect, suspected causes are set to given values where other conditions are randomly sampled. As everyone knows, correlation doesn't mean causality, and more generally, statistical dependencies don't mean causal relationships. However, experiments are often needed, but they may be costly, unethical, or even infeasible. In our setup, we will try to infer potential causal relationship from pre-recorded data, some of which may be experimental or observational we don't know, but we will assume that there are no feedback loops, no explicit time information, and that a variable can be thought of as an aggregate statistic, like life expectancy of a population, or a measurement, like temperature. We consider pairs of variable a, b, for which a causes b means a is a function of b and some noise, representing other variables. Pairs are drawn independently of each other. This slide shows an example of a causal graph. This is a virtual example, not intended to represent actual variable dependencies reflected in real cases. Each node represents a variable, and hypothetically, lung cancer may be caused by various factors, including smoking and genetics. And in turn, smoking may be caused by peer pressure or anxiety. Then lung cancer itself may cause coughing or fatigue. To prescribe a treatment, it's important to distinguish between causes and effects. While coughing and fatigue correlate with lung cancer, preventing coughing or fatigue by prescribing cough medicine or rest would not prevent lung cancer. However, preventing smoking might have an effect on lung cancer according to this graph. Notice that the variable attention disorder will be correlated to lung cancer because it shares a common cause, genetics, and such factors are called confounding factors or confounders. If we would conduct a planned experiment by systematically setting the variables in the graph to given values and measuring their effect on lung cancer, this would be equivalent to disconnected all the nodes in the graph except smoking and genetics from lung cancer. This is why experiments are the gold standard for determining causal relationships. All is needed in a well-designed experiment is to assess the significance of the dependencies between potential causes and the outcome. In the literature, you will find that it is possible, to some extent, to assess causal relationships without experimentation using conditional independence tests. For instance, in all the graphs, a causes Z causes B, or B causes Z causes A, or Z causes A and Z causes B, we always have A is independent of B given Z, but not in the case where A and B both cause Z. In this last case, A and B are dependent given Z. Such methods require a lot of data to work well and often rely on simplifying assumptions such as causal sufficiency faithfulness, linearity, and Gaussian noise. And they are limited to Markov equivalent classes. For example, the three first graphs that we showed, they cannot be distinguished from each other on the basis of just one conditional independence test. In this challenge, we limit ourselves to only four cases. A causes B, B causes A, A and B have a common cause, or A is independent of B. Typical methods to address this problem test whether A causes B is a better explanation 
then B causes A. By comparing two models, B is a function of A and some noise, or A is a function of B and some noise. The participants are expected to produce a score between minus infinity and plus infinity. Large positive scores mean A causes B, and small negative scores mean B causes A. Scores near zero may mean either that uh, there is a common cause to A and B, or that A and B are independent. The central problem to be addressed is whether A is a cause of B. So we want to phrase that as a classification problem in which uh, we want to separate the class A causes B from all the other cases. A causes B is the positive class and all the other cases make the negative class. And we score the result with the area under the RC curve or AUC. Because the problem is symmetrical, then the problem of separating B causes A from all the other cases can also be scored with the same technique. So we do so and we average the two resulting scores. The rational is that we want to be able to apply such methods to massive data mining of publicly available data and rank pairs of variables in order of most pro promising putative causal relationship to the least promising. Then the most promising causal relationships may be submitted to experimental validation. In this slide, we remind you of how the AUC metric is computed. We vary a threshold theta on the score S provided by the participants, where S over theta means that A causes B. Positive examples are of the class A causes B, and negative examples are from any of the other classes. We define sensitivity as the fraction of true positives over all positive, and specificity as the fraction of true negative over all negative. The area under the rock curve means the area under the curve plotting sensitivity versus specificity when theta varies. The balance accuracy is just the average between sensitivity and specificity. Okay, now let's try a quiz. What do you think? Does A cause B or does B cause A? Think about it. Okay, here's a clue. In some cases, there is a nonlinear functional relationship between the two. And if it's non-invertible, maybe you can figure it out. All right, here's the answer. A is temperature and B is altitude. So it is B causes A. Why that? Did you get it? Okay. Here's the answer. If you fit A causes B or B causes A, you don't get as good a fit. You get a better fit if you fit that A is a function of B rather than B a function of A. Because there is this nonlinear relationship that is non-invertible. Do you see that? Okay, here's another example. What do you think? Does A cause B or B cause A? Okay, here, here's the answer. B is wages and A is age. So it's A causes B. Here's another one. Does A cause B or B cause A? That one's easy, right? They're independent. Okay, another one. Good. Does A cause B or B cause A? Well, you guessed it. This is the remaining case. There is a common cause to A and B. The case is symmetrical. A doesn't cause B or B cause A. There is a common cause. We hope that we will be participating in this challenge and contribute to the success of scientific discovery using causal relationships. Imagine that we could find out what causes epidemics, what causes cancer, what causes climate changes, what causes economic changes. By analyzing data constantly collected, bring your solution or bring your own data 
you accept data donations that will be scored by the participants and for which you this work would not have been possible without the help of many people who are very gratefully acknowledged. This challenge is brought to you by Chalern, and we would like to thank all the directors of Chalern who contribute volunteer work to review protocols and uh, review results of challenges. The initial impulse for this particular challenge was given by the cause effect pairs task proposed in the causality potluck challenge we organized three years ago by Joris Monge. Dominic Jansig and Bernard Shalkov. The protocol reviewers, advisors, and beta testers are gratefully acknowledged. They include Hugo Sarri Escalante, Seth Flaxman, Michael Henav, Patrick Royer, Dominic Jansig, Richard Kenaway, Vincent Lamer, Joyce Monge, Jonas Peters, Florent Popescu, Bernard Shalkov, Peter Spirdes, Alexander Statnikov, Ioannis Timradinos, Jiang Xin Dien, and Kung Tsang. The sample code and data preparation was performed by Isabel Gayen, Ben Hamner, Michael Hennaf, and Alexander Statnikov. We would also like to thank very much uh, Gaggle for hosting the submission website, the Pascal II Network of Excellence for providing funding for preparing the challenge, and the IJCNN 2003 conference for providing prizes. We hope you will participate and win.